Thank you for the reminder. Okay. So should we want to just uh, introduce ourselves just real fast, <clears throat> since there's only seven of us. I'm Jim Graywolf. Um, just one of the people here in the circle. And my co-presenter is Maya. And uh, yeah, well, you could say a little more about yourself. Um, I would just say, um, Jim and I have known each other for four years. We've been on the core council of uh, Loving Waters, which is uh, an organization of water stewards, water lovers, water protectors. And um, that's how we know each other. Um, I am a water ceremonialist. I do water ceremony every month on the full moon for my community for the last six years. And uh, I'm also a nature-based uh, life coach and a poet. And I will share some of my poetry with you about water today also. And uh, I'm so glad to be here and have folks from all around the world. And so welcome, welcome to this water circle today, the water wisdom circle. Good. Uh, next, I'll just go down the line as I see it. Chief Charles. Yeah. Hello, everyone. My relations, how are you? Uh, I am the principal chief of United West Lenape Nation. I've been involved uh, in activism since 1967, uh, marching in the uh, Martin Luther King movement, uh, and been a buzzard man pretty much all my life as far as watching those at the burial ground, things of that matter, and uh, uh, working with nature and uh, people all over the world. And uh, I'm honored to be here today and to share this over the uh, over water because uh, she is sacred. She is the blood of the earth. And, uh, it's essential for everything upon the planet. So I'm, I'm honored to be here today. Thanks, Charles. Uh, Minkat, you're next. Yeah, very good morning to all of you. Uh, I am from India and uh, yeah, it's morning here. <laughs> uh, 13th of September to be precise. But yeah, I, I'm from India and I'm from Darjeeling, but currently I'm in Nepal. And um, I'm very happy to be a part of uh, this uh, wisdom circle where we are talking about water because we don't do it anymore. And I feel that's one of the forgotten entities and uh, it gives me great pleasure to really uh, talk about the river that I come from, uh, which is River Tista, and uh, which is suffering a lot for, for some time now. And uh, I'm a storyteller as well as a filmmaker who's made a film on River Tista. But I feel um, water is one element which binds all the factors and all the elements. And I feel that's a very powerful uh, element and uh, yeah, I want, I want to connect. I'm very happy to have my friend for the first time here with me, uh, just bringing my own community in the forefront because for a very long time, we have been marginalized. Uh, we, our history has gone. And I think this is one of the most powerful times when we come together and share our ancestors' story. Thank you. Thank you, Minka. And Sue, you're next. Hello everyone, I'm Sue Graywolf, also uh, grandmother Thunderbird. And um, I'm a grandmother who just is overly enthusiastic about the outdoors, about nature. Um, I have very, very deep connections with nature and um, just all the elements. And I've learned much over the years through many um, different um, people who share their love of the water and their prayers and their ceremonies. Um, and um, it's been, it's been a very enjoyable major experience for me to be able to take part in all the ceremonies that have occurred over the years. Um, and to me, it's powerful to know that there are so many people that are waking up and really learning to respect and honor the elements and water is life. And um, it's just something that uh, we need and we cannot do without. 
So I'm grateful to be here and honored to be here with you folks. And uh, it's nice to see you again, Maya. It's, it's yeah. been a while. <laughs> and um, all you young folks, I love it, <laughs> as I said early. And of course, Charles Two Dog too. It's great to see you again. Thank you. Thanks. And now I'm going to try this. And you correct me right, right away. Alien? Alien. <laughs> Darn. I thought I had it. OK. <laughs> Welcome. Hello, everyone. I'm Alien, and I'm from Kalimpong, which is at the foothills of the river of the mountain uh, Himalayas. And uh, I'm basically uh, from the Leptra lineage of the Leptra tribe. And uh, I'm here today to share my story, uh, the story of our people. And uh, this opportunity has just come by and I'm very grateful and I'm here to receive, to share, especially love today. Today for mm -hmm. me, I think the uh, message, the feeling is of love and yeah. I'd like to be able to do that today. Very, very nice. Thank you. And so, uh, and I'm Jim Grey Wolf. Um, I'm not one of the young ones who so identified, you can tell. Um, I'm here to share some of the things I've learned and some of the mistakes I've made so others don't have to learn them. I think you're all right, and it's been said by many. Um, yeah, love is the guiding principle here right now, and change is where we're at. And so it's wonderful that we're coming together. Uh, and we never know who's going to show up in these circles, but the right people always do. For those listening or for those who listen to this later, because it's recorded and goes out around the globe, um, Minket's uh, video is on in our group, I believe. So you can look, look at that at any time. And um, Eliane is going to do a presentation sometime this week. I'm not quite sure where. There's been a, some interesting things with this, all of this, folks. Uh, this is very new, what's being done. We just heard this ourselves. There's like 25 different feeds. Is that what it was, Maya? I think. Yeah. So uh, it's really uh, something none of us have ever done before. And Becky is still here with us for a few minutes. She's one of the principals in this. So we thank her and everyone else who has put this together. And we all just have patience and go along with this however it, however it flows. To get us started, um, we always do an opening prayer. Would either of our two new people want to do an opening prayer or should I turn it to somebody else? I think Alien, I feel like it's there, right in our mouth, really waiting to be told. Ah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Can you I invite everyone to uh, mute who's not speaking, the other people to mute so the sound is a little better. Except for you, Alia. The universe, the Mother Earth, the ancestors, and all of love and light. We come before you today in this wisdom circle and ask for your blessings and your guidance and your protection. Please help us be vessels of your love, of your wisdom and your kindness and gentleness. Please bless our journey. Please bless this circle. Please bless everyone who joins this circle. Show us the way and please be with us through this journey. Thank you with all our hearts and our souls. Thank you. Beautiful. And maybe maybe we shift halfway around the world and we ask Charles to do uh, a matching opening prayer so that we have both sides of the world. Would you do that, Charles? Oh. Did you mind him? God, Buddha, all the names that people call you around the world. Hear me. I am weak, I sing this weak voice to you. 
grandfather, we thank you. We say that we are grateful. We give this up to you, Wokila. That we are grateful to be able to share today with people around the world. To look at us and to look up to you and to look at our brothers and our sisters, the ones that you have made, and to look at and be able to say our relatives working together in a peaceful way, talking in a peaceful way, to hold this council. Grandfather, we thank you. We are grateful and that we can walk and be able to talk with each other and to be your children and be able to communicate. And grandfather, we thank you for everyone that is listening and for everyone that is here and for the world and for the people of honor and the peace that we are looking for and the love and the honor and the respect of all. Oh, my God, bless you. Oh, thank you. We tied the globe together very easily. So Maya, do you uh, want to bring in the water? And the I do, and I want to say that I brought um, this crystal ball of water. It's structured water, so water in its beautiful natural form. And there's a crystal in here. Um, it was initiated in the opening ceremony uh, yesterday. And I'm going to have this bowl of water here through every presentation. So all the prayers you've spoken go into this water, all the teachings that happen, all the sharings, we carry it through the week. So I just honor that. And I would just like to be the voice of water to start us off and I would like to read a piece that is the voice of water speaking and, uh, and to, be, to be heard as water. And I just call this piece, I am water, a sovereign being. So as water, I am a sovereign being and claim my right to move unrestricted, to flow at my own pace, surging, plunging, spiraling, meandering, resting in stillness, surrendering to the call of gravity and seeping deep into the caverns of Mother Earth. Free to find my way back to my other mother, the ocean, or to fly among the birds as a cloud, even to fly as a bird because as all living things are mostly made up of me, free to retain my purity, to choose natural partners to bond with, dance with, not to be forced to partner with harsh chemicals, unnatural or toxic substances. I claim my right to retain my natural crystalline state so that I may receive and carry the beautiful harmonic vibrations of birdsong, the winds, the whales, the sounds of music, and the earth's resonant heartbeat. Without that constant interference of the pounding, shrieking, grinding, roaring of machines that scramble my energy. Free to feed and nourish those who thirst for me, to transmit the vitality of life throughout their bodies, free to offer them my sounds to calm them, reassure them, comfort them, and help their emotions to release and flow, to be accepted, blessed, and transformed, to offer my reflective mirror for inspiration, for seeing the truth, and even seeing into the future. And in return, as water, I yearn to be heard, listened to, respected as a conscious being, to have a two-way dialogue with other conscious beings, to be treated as family, protected, respected, 
and supported to live my divine purpose on Mother Earth. I want humans to understand that they are all interconnected through me and that like me, they can retain their unique individuality, their diversity, while also awakening to the truth of their oneness, their complete interdependence with every other living thing and with me, as well as all of the other elements. I am water, a sovereign being, and I want all to recognize and live in their own sovereignty and the sovereignty of the one sacred web of life. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, that was we, powerful. Yeah. I see we have um, some people listening, so welcome. Glad that you're here. Uh, somebody already asked a question about other wisdom circles. Yes, there will be two more this week. The next one is, um, I believe, Tuesday. It's on our Trello board, folks. Um, that'll be an interesting one. We're going to talk about ways to move forward. Aligning humanity. And we're going to do this uh, in partnership with a new group of friends, uh, Wise Humanity, with um, Veronica out of Uruguay. So some of their folks will also join us. That should be a pretty interesting one as well. And then later in the week, we will have a third one, but we'll talk about that one later because we're not quite sure what it's going to be yet as this week evolves. Um, I was just, as we were talking, uh, I got some questions earlier too. Um, we're opening with water um, for a reason, because in a lot of the prophecies, it's water and fire right now. And I'd be curious to hear what it is in India. I have a suspicion I know. Um, water and fire are the two biggies. Water is the healing one. Water is the one to pull us together. And I've been a water protector for a long time now, as has Maya and many of the others so, who are here. Um, but we're not that doesn't lessen the others. We will be bringing the others into this conversation, into the other circles, and into the other programs as we go along. We already talked a little bit about water and fire uh, earlier today when uh, Shelly Ostroff um, did a beautiful presentation on the world water law. To me, um, the fire and the water, that's the masculine and the feminine coming together now. The fire to burn things, to clean things, to help purify things and then the water to heal it and allow us to grow something new. And I think that's where we are now, but I'm just going to throw that out there. Anyone want to take the stick on that and say more? I think there's a hand up button somewhere too. I'm not sure. We have a small enough group here. You can just put your hand up too. <laughs> so we'll see you. Good point. <laughs> Anybody want to talk about fire in relation to water or starting off the water piece or all the above? Um, I, think, okay. I think it's uh, all of the, the above, but go ahead. I'll let, uh, go ahead, my my lady. I will back and let you, uh, let you have it. No, I, I just wanted to uh, uh, like ask because I think my Alien, Alien will be presenting it today. So I think she was kind of uh, not sure about which category would that be, but uh, her piece of work uh, will be presented today. So I guess I wanted to know when will that happen? Oh, that's what I was asking. If it was on the Trello board, because we schedule programs separate from the wisdom circles. The wisdom circles are to talk. But okay. we, can, we can do some of the program here too. I mean, that's fine. We're, we're not... We're not constricted to anything here. So if you want to present some here, yeah. that's fine too. And we just yeah. thought in the style of talking circle that we would, each person would share, be, we'd have everybody share into the circle first before we go into any other discussion or people speak a second time, okay? Yes, yes, okay. Good point. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think because Alien's uh, work is also very personal and like almost like a conversation. So maybe like when she feels right, that she can share it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Charles, did you want to jump in? Uh, you know, I was thinking, uh, you know, when it comes to the fire in the water, you know, it's uh, it's the masculine and the, and the feminine come together. It is. And it, it's how it works together. You know, all these elements, the fire, the water, the air, all this is here in the natural reason, a natural realm, okay? And a lot of times, when you talk about peace in this world, I seem to go back to the Iroquois Confederacy and the Great Circle Fire there, okay? When the five nations came together and the peacemaker come in, which now is six nations with Tuscarora, okay? So I seem to always reflect on that because that is that unity again, where it brought the six nations together. So in a way, we're doing the same thing, you know, in a fire inside, you know, inside ourselves. And the water that is in a part of us as well, it all comes together for the benefit of the whole. So I am really grateful. So I give that back to you, brother. Thanks, Chief. Um, Sue, anything to add? I'm going to speak. Um, also, what we have been feeling uh, at this moment of time is that there is a lot of, um, like the phoenix, a lot of fire, a lot of cleansing, a lot of um, old patterns, a lot of old wiring being burnt lovingly. And uh, this water is needed to soothe this transformation, which is not always very gentle to some people or to some beings. And uh, I feel water at this point is very crucial because we have been in the process of cleansing for a long time now. And it is very intense at this point of time. So water and speaking about water today is essential because now a lot of energies are ready to move forward and for them to feel the calm and for them to feel um, at balance, water is essential at this point of time, I feel. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Any general comments? You know, Jim, I, I'm called after um, Eliane speaking to say, yes, I'm right here in Southern California. I'm in the land of the Shumash Nation. And we are, yes, the whole state of California is on fire right now. And Oregon and Washington have fires, uh, Colorado. I, and I feel that, wow, this is, there's right now, we have this imbalance. And I thought of originally the fire, the masculine fire was the one who connected people, everyone in the tribal groups, in the early groups, gathered around the fire in the circle. And it brought people together in that sense of equality. And then with the more modern culture emerging, the Western civilization, it was like certain men in particular, you know, but uh, grabbed the fire, took torches and like the power and took it into the hierarchies and took it away from that gathering place and only certain people carried the fire and others didn't have the benefit of the fire or there was not this equality. And so now in this age, it's up to the water to bring back the connection because now we're learning that water is everywhere. Water is inside each of us 
and all living beings. It's in the air. It's even in outer space. It's in this as, as ice particles. It's in the sun. It's deep in the earth. It's in every other element. And as I was saying yesterday, it's almost like an organic internet. And maybe this is the way we have telepathy and non-local prayer is that the water carries those messages. I, I imagine something like that. So, so now it is more up to this feminine element, the water, to do what ages ago the fire actually did. And so, you know, I don't know, the, the fires here, I agree that ultimately it's cleansing the land, but um, it's also it's also letting us know that it's been out of balance <laughs> and it is right now. So I, I welcome that and, and want to dedicate myself to help educate people about what water is, really is and how it connects us all. Yeah, that's some good points. Um, I, I like your thoughts on fire. They make sense. But the other part of that was, um, yes, they came around in circles, and I've been lucky enough to sit in many of those circles over the years. But they also, uh, people chose water to build where they were going to live. So fire and water have been together from the very beginning. They had to have water for food because it would draw animals for all kinds of reasons um, to get around. And then you needed fire to deal with it. And you're absolutely right, I think. The problem is everything is totally out of balance. And you're, you're sitting right in the heart of it right now uh, with your red skies. And, and I'm surprised you're not sneezing and coughing as we're doing this presentation because it's not a good place to be. The whole West is pretty much in flames. One of the things that um, I heard one of the people in the scientific community say maybe yesterday, which I've given some thought to, and that is as hard as things are right now and as difficult as they are and what's what we're watching around us, that in 20 years, we may look back and say, boy, I wish I had it then. It was much easier. And we don't want that to become reality. We want to seek that, that balance now, fire, water, and also air and earth. I mean, we need all of them. Um, and that's internal as well as external. So, yeah, thanks, Maya. I think that was some good... And I put the talking stick back in the middle. Yeah, I just want to add a bit on this. I feel like uh, with what the way the world is going on and uh, with the kind of uh, video, uh, sorry, uh, the kind of images that we see in an internet, I think uh, there is a lot of fire energy that's created inside us too. Like there's so much that goes in. Like there's so much of emotion that's coming from the suffering and whatever that's happening, not just to our country or our side, but to your side too. And I think the very fact that we all are here together talking about water itself means the element itself is speaking. Uh, there is something where we also want to heal with ourselves and inside us while there is an energy that's going around and next to us, but inside also, I guess we need that sustaining healing power to kind of give that balance uh, for fire to also balance with, uh, you know, water. So I feel internalizing this particular aspect also is very important. And I feel like I'm here for that too. So thank you for being a part of it. Beautiful, thank you. Talking sticks back in the middle again. Charles, Charles. Uh, I can say it like, you know, a lot like this. Within these, uh, these times, at, we always knew that everything on this earth had been, the rocks have been, the water has been. Makaina, the earth mother, has been. The wingets have been. We just happen to be the human being here. And uh, the clan mother system actually kept a lot of us in balance as well. So it's not like I always say, it's always up to me as a man to a, you know, and a warrior as well, you know, 
to always bow to the life giver, which I do right now. But without, you know, I come from woman myself, so I come from that water. All right. So it is always my honor to always bow to the life giver because without you, there would be no life. Without water, there would be no life. So I want to share that with you. Thank you, brother. Um, all the ends. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, also, this other thing, which in my presentation, the short one I would share, is how we've been away from nature so much that we've forgotten the being. We've forgotten to connect. And I felt this, and I still feel this a lot because of all the um, information and other distractions that are around, it, it has become difficult for us to really, really connect to water again. And I feel that, that especially with us younger people and even younger than us, that connection is completely lost. And there are very few who actually look to connect to Mother Earth and the elements and to, to the divine again. You know, and I think that, that the problem begins there a lot of times because we've forgotten, we have completely forgotten. And I think it's important to um, address or be able to just bring that connection again through various means, through art, through, through music, through all kinds of things. And I think that's important. And I feel that that's a, a truth and that is a reality right now. Yeah, I, I couldn't I couldn't agree more. Um, absolutely. My whole life has been about nature. I feel most connected in nature. And too many people, yeah, um, just are totally disconnected from nature, from the earth mother, from the water, um, from all parts of it. And it's it's making things even more difficult right now, I believe. <clears throat> I'm watching people um, in a lot of fear uh, and a lot of anger watching people lash out, even people I know uh, well, um, saying and doing things that, I, that are really out of balance. I'm watching myself and my own fears and my own angers. And I think the more we can reconnect, absolutely right. And, and that's why water is the key, <clears throat> because water is that healing piece. Water, when it flows along, if it hits a big rock, what does it do? It goes around it. Right now, I feel like we're just trying to bang against that rock and move it. And we're not going to, because nature uh, rules, not us. And I, that's the big one we have to relearn. All our indigenous friends, and certainly all our ancestors, they knew that. They knew to listen to nature. They knew not to foul the waters, because that was what they needed to live. They knew not to dig everything out of the earth so that we couldn't live effectively. And I, I Think, think I know that's what we're going back to. Too many prophecies and too many cultures around the world tell us that's what we're doing right now. And it's our choice. I mean, we either do it or not. But I think we will do it. But, you know, I think you're right. It, it won't be necessarily easy. I think, personally, we're getting to the end of the really hard part. I hope so. 2021 was always the time they said we should start rebuilding. That doesn't mean it's, you know, we throw a switch. But... I, I'm, I'm hoping I see that and seeing so many young people and yes, even much younger than you guys. I mean, teens I'm watching stand up who just understand this so much better than, than people in my generation who have forgotten. So thank you. That's, that's an incredibly important message. And I throw the stick back and I lay it carefully back in the middle. I just want to acknowledge that two people have joined us, uh, Linda and Tomo Goto. Um, I don't know where you're from or if you want to join us or you came just to observe, uh, but you're welcome in this room, the four elements room, focusing on water today and all, all of our relationships with water. And uh, I just wanted to add a, a, a piece, Jim, in listening to you, I think like I, I have this quote from Charles Dickens about 
It was the best of times. It was the worst of times, you know. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. He goes on. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the winter of despair. It was the spring of hope. And I was just thinking during the whole pandemic and the shutdown, yes, some people just sequester themselves and get on their screens and watch movies, but other people are actually getting garden, get back to gardening and getting their hands in the earth. And, you know, they can't go to the gyms, so they are walking in the beach and the mountains. And so it's like both things happening at the same time from this, this virus that has stopped us in our tracks. And, you know, I don't know, you know, it's like, which side's gonna win or it's like that, which wolf do we wanna feed? <laughs> but um, the, the trance of the screen, which we're so grateful we can use the Zoom today, the blessing of this technology, and yet at the same time, the curse of it, that, en that enchants people and entrances them and takes them away from this tangible, beautiful relationship with, with the waters, the trees, the earth. So I just wanna say, it's, I see both. And of course, I am praying for the reconnection to nature to happen. And it makes me so sad some days that I, you know, I just cry. And um, yeah. so I turn the talking stick over to whoever would like to share next and invite the new people if you would like to. Well, if you allow me, everyone on this earth, mother. I don't care what what nation you're from. Everybody on this earth at one time in the sacred four direction, everybody was tribal people. Everyone. Okay. Everybody, the blacks, the whites, the yellows, the reds of all of us, the brown. We were all tribal people, right? We all had that connection to the Earth Mother. We knew, we knew what to pick from the, from the Earth Mother to heal. We knew what to pick to eat with, you know, or we knew how to do these things and how to live with nature, okay? The problem is a lot of us have forgotten that we were once tribal people, okay? So it's time to get back to that waters, okay? So I want to say a little bit, I can't say it completely, you know, the way he did, but I'm going to say it this way. There was a great man in the sixth. His name was Bruce Lee. And Bruce Lee said, when you put water into a teacup, it becomes a teacup. You put water in a teapot, it becomes the pot. Water can crash or it can be gentle. Be watered, my friend. So, wise words. So, this is what I'm sharing with you. Now, from uh, a man I followed since 1969, as far as uh, John is concerned, I can say it like, uh, like he did. The, uh, the problem is you have, uh, I, I don't know what you actually call it, you know, civilization. Okay. Civilization is the great lie. There's nothing simple about it. Okay. So what he's actually meaning is that tribal spiritual connection, okay, is to get back to we are responsible on this earth. Okay. We are responsible. We are caretakers of the earth mother, the waters, the trees, the wind, it's everything. We live with nature. 
and we have to remember <laughs> that we are also part of nature in itself. We are the two-legged animal upon this mother. So I just wanted to uh, share that with you. And uh, I hope that answers some, a few questions out here too. Thank you. Oh. Um, also, suddenly I've been asked to share um, this. It's hot and it's sunny and there is fire and you are waiting for the rain. You don't have to wait for the rain. You have to be the rain. And we're being asked to become the rain because at this point, it is needed for us to be the rain. And I feel this uh, message is important. I understand what you're, you're saying very strongly because um, all of us can share our energy and our hearts and our love and we can send that energy and love and just see hearts of rain coming down. Just, just connect with everything around us because we are one with everything. We are part of this, this world. Um, there's, there's no disconnect and that's, that was a powerful thing that just came through you, but it's, it's so true because it's, um, it's, it's needed. We all, all of us have the power and the energy to become one with everything that's around us, to become one with the clouds, help make the rain, just do what we can, send that energy and that love out there. It's, um, it's so imperative. And as you were speak, speaking earlier about the children, um, my heart just uh, smiles when I see families with their children out hiking in the woods. They're teaching them to connect and be with life. And I spent so much time with my grandchildren um, when they were younger. And I see since I've been away for a while that they have disconnected from that um that energy and it's it's sad it's so sad to see and it's really powerful to um be able to reconnect with them and to to get them back out there at one point it was it was so incredible to be able to to go for a walk and there were some bumblebees and bumblebees are the most gentle creatures on this earth and we actually walked up to this bush and I said, you can actually go up and you can actually touch a bumblebee and they won't, they won't, uh, they won't bother you. They'll just continue doing what they're doing. And um, I was so much fun watching the children just totally, totally freak out. <laughs> but um, they were so excited because that was like a, a connection for them. You know, they said, wow, look at this. You know, that's a bee. Most parents teach children, you know, bugs are bad, you know, that you need to destroy them. And um, so it's just, there's just so much, um, so much all of us can do. And I know the water elements, I know Jim and I had our experience with water energy when we were living in Colorado during the floods. Um, and that was pretty amazing um the power um and you know it's just um the elements they're speaking and they're going to continue to speak and people are needing to come together and to realize how important these elements and this this earth is and by having all these groups these 
you know, caravans going cross country, everything. It's just, we're starting to all come together and that's what's required right now. We need to really just show our light and show our love and connect and just be, be true to who we are and connect with nature. Fumi has joined us too. Welcome, Fumi. <laughs> to the to our room, we're focusing on water and our relationship to water, and everybody's just speaking from their hearts. Then uh, feel free to jump in if you would like to. And I, I just want to add to what Alien, when you were speaking and you were saying, we must be the rain. We can't wait for the rain. We must be the rain. And I thought of the aspect of grieving, of shedding mm -hmm. our of being open about the grief we feel for what's happening to Mother Earth and to the waters and to the animals and the plants and everything, that it's, it's time to really feel, be, do that openly. And I, sometimes I've led grie grieving circles and so much of what comes up for people is not just their relatives dying, but all their relatives, the, you know, the other beings and, and what's happening to the Earth. So I, I, I want to dedicate my tears and encourage us all to be more open with our grief mm. because it, it is it is both we have hope and, but what we are grieving there's so much loss right now um and uh so i i, I really honor what you said about us being the water and being the rain to mm -hmm. soften bring that softness that soothing and 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 to each other so thank, mm -hmm. thank you for that Alia. I also like when I hear anyone say we now and not I, because everything has to be we now. We have to accomplish this. No small group of people is going to lead us out of this. This has to be all of us. So yeah, and while you were, while you were speaking, I was, yeah, I was almost tearing up. You, you touched something in me. I'll have to, I'll have to go into that later, but uh, yeah, thank you. I just want to say, and then, and I see your hands up, I'll go back to you. I've got my phone sitting here now. Our friend Frank from um, Pine Ridge is on. He's now up to 11 people. So Frank and 11 people, they have rotten connection there. But for years, they've followed Sue and I and Chief and I. So we've got 12 people now listening from Pine Ridge uh, Indian Reservation, Lakota Reservation. And I told them, as always, well, they always, if they have something to say, they always do. The one thing he said was uh, just Chief Seattle. So I will touch that for a moment and then put the stick back in. Chief Seattle was chief of the Squamish up in the Northwest in Washington, one of the places, of course, in flames now. Well, most of the West is. Um, but, and I'll paraphrase him because I don't remember all the exact quotes, but uh, we cannot sell the land. We cannot buy the air. We cannot sell the water. They are in control. We must honor them. And a lot of the ancestors knew this time was coming way back then. And so now when I read their words, I just do exactly what Charles is doing. Nod my head and say, yep. So um, thank you for that, Frank, or whoever in your group. Yeah, the words of uh, Chief Seattle. Did you have your hand up? Yes, I did. And that message that came before has another part to it. And um, it, it, it's, it says that one has to be gentle like the rain mm. and also as strong and firm as the rain when it needs to be. And the thing that Maya had shared before about us grieving, then the third part of the message was that we need to feel each drop of rain on our face. And that was the part about grieving, which I first had not understood when I received that message, but it makes sense um, to me now. Things seem to make sense as we go along with this, these circles, yes. Charles. I would like to add also that uh, Lakota wisdom keepers, okay? once said 
for a man to learn how to cry is to show compassion and understanding. Okay. So we as men, I've seen a lot of times when in the old days they told us, men don't cry and you know, suck it up. Okay. But once you do, you learn compassion and understanding and actually being able to work with each other when you do. So, there's nothing wrong for a man to cry because actually that's becoming more understanding of everything. So I, I hope that, I, I give it back, I give the stick back in the middle. Thank you, brother. I see Fumi is here, or maybe Maya said that. Um, so that's interesting too. Here's something else. That it, that's come out of these things already this week. I guess Fumi is holding flags, carrying flags, and so does Charles. Charles holds 99 flags from around the world. And so they're going to be connecting up after this convergence is over. I would I, love that. I would love that, Charles. I would love, love, love that. We see the flags not as a political symbol. It's a spirit, it's the soul of, of the people of that country, of the citizens. It represents life, you know, all kingdoms of plants, animals, all creation is just manifested through that symbolism of the flag. And we, when we pray for every country, we really feel that we're connecting with the guardians and the protectors of that land and that nation. So it's really sacred, you know, this invoking peace in, in the countries, using the flags as a portal. It's, I, I just love the work, love the work. But about water, may I share a little bit about water? And I just jumped in, so I'm, I'm not sure where the conversation was before I was here. But, um, you know, I grew up in Japan. My, mom, my mom's Japanese. So, you know, I grew up there and we had a different um, relationship with water. And, and, you know, there was scarcity of water, a lot of scarcity of water growing up. And so the water was very precious. Um, you know, when, when we take a bath, we fill up the bath, and the whole family uses the same bath water. So, you know, there's outside, there's a, a washing place. So you, you wash before you get into the tub, so you're clean. And everybody uses the same water. And then um, the next day, we used to use that water for washing clothes. You know, in goes the laundry into the big bathtub and the bathtub was very deep and, you know, plenty of water. And then you're washing in the bathtub. And I remember that growing up, like, wow, what's so different, you know, how we respected and used water, like such a precious resource, never, never wasting it. And also um, in the summer, we used to have a lot of drought time where you know the the rain wouldn't come and the the whole i mean this is in a big city this is in tokyo they would just stop the water nobody can have water between <laughs> one o'clock and five o'clock nada no water you're not going to get any water so people had this different respect and relationship with water i think you know of course we save the water in a bucket whatever you need you use but it's so different now when you know we call it um it's almost like there's a saying a flush water society you know everything just it just gets flushed away and possessions and everything you know it's just renew and all these new things all the time you know just flush it all away um so I just was reflecting on, I, I don't know what the point is, but you know, just like it's so precious to have that relationship or just even to, to have that experience of that relationship with water in your life. So I, I just wanted to share that. Thank you. And this afternoon, I, 
I interviewed um, Cheryl Eagles from Hawaii, and you just brought that back to my mind. I thought she was going to be talking about rising sea levels and all those issues from climate change. And instead, she began talking about all the issues they have about clean drinking water in Hawaii. So, yeah, we do have to remember all the different aspects. And they're doing, we're attempting to do a lot of the things you're talking about now, seeing how can we reuse water and, and still have it clean. So, yeah, that's, um, that, both of you just opened my eyes to a larger spectrum, I guess. And I'll be curious to see what comes out of the, the uh, flag holders talking after this. I'm sure that's going to be powerful, too. Dana, do you want to um, uh, Charles, Hi, uh, do you, oh, oh, can I just say, yeah, do yeah, you no, know no. The, the flag for the International Indigenous Unity flag? I know of it. I haven't got it yet. But uh, basically, uh, we, we'll talk about this uh, when we meet again. But uh, this actually came from a vision. Mm -hmm. And every one of the ones I have in here, I actually didn't ask for. I don't know half the people that sent it. I just know they're here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to hold it at that for right now, and we'll talk a little bit after that. Yes, please. Yeah. Dana? Aloha, everyone. Uh, so Fumi and myself and Tomo and Linda just came over from another presentation in which we were uh, having a discussion with Dr. Yasuyuki Nemoto, who was a co close colleague of Dr. Masaru Emoto, uh, who studied water and uh, showed us all those beautiful messages from water, how water crystallized and different beautiful patterns in response to human emotion and consciousness. And uh, Dr. Nemoto was just sharing with us for the last uh, hour and a half uh, in Fumi's uh, Peace and Spirituality Room. So now four of us came over here just from that uh, conversation. And I, uh, I wanted to share my perspective on water. I, I believe water is so, so important, but I also believe that, that we know almost nothing about water, almost nothing. I, I, like everything we know about water or we think we know about water is like a surface level. It's just on the surface. I believe that water has functions and consciousness and multidimensional capacities that humanity has yet to discover. And there's so much so much depth and profundity to what water really is. Um, I see water as an energetic communicator, uh, an encoder, transmitter, and translator of energetic patterns of information. And there's some evidence out there already that that is true, that science is already starting to show that that, that is true. Water is a communicator. And um, I also believe that water is a bridge between dimensions. And uh, interestingly, Dr. Nemoto also shared my view about that. And um, I believe that water may very well be the most advanced form of consciousness on Earth. I really believe that. And uh, something that Dr. Emoto used to share was that he believed we should regard water with the same reverence that we would regard God, because water is that advanced a consciousness that we have really, really um, so much yet to, to understand about. And I think that learning to connect with water at that level, at that level of it, seeing it as an energetic communicator, as a consciousness, an advanced consciousness, a bridge between dimensions is, is a critical next step in humanity's evolution. Like that's an important next step for us. And to develop that connection with water from an energetic level. And that will help us advance in our own um, human development and the development of life and consciousness on the planet. So I just wanted to 
share that. And I'll probably be sharing some more depth about that in, in the presentation that I give here uh, in the Four Elements Room on Thursday night. Um, I'm going to do a presentation called What are Reflections? Consciousness, Communication, and Coherence Meditation for the New Moon. And in that presentation, I'll go a little bit more into some of the science about the energetic um, level of water. And, but it will also be a, a space for exploration. So if you're interested in just uh, discussing that, because I don't think anyone is really an expert on that yet. There's so much more to, to learn and to discover. And uh, I've actually formed a, um, a study group recently. It's called the Water Connection Study Group. And uh, there's a couple of, of members uh, also participating here in the Upconvergence. And we're looking at, um, we're looking at water from that, from that deeper uh, energetic perspective. And we're just coming together meeting once a week and exploring what we what we know and what we can bring in uh, in all different ways to deepen our exploration of the consciousness of water and the role of water as, as an energetic communicator. So um, if anybody's interested in joining that uh, study group, you can connect with me. Um, how do, I do, how do we do that? One way to connect with me is to find my Heart Magic page on Facebook. I have a Facebook page called Heart Magic. So if you look for Dana Tomasino and Heart Magic, you'll find my Heart Magic Facebook page and you can message me on there if you're interested in joining our water group and uh, contributing and exploring with us. So um, that's a little bit of what I have going on. And also on Thursday, you know, because water really does respond to our consciousness and respond to our heart energy. And uh, that's another aspect of my background. I was a researcher at the HeartMath Institute for, for 12 years, uh, studying really the energy of love and how that affects the expression of the heart itself. And there are, there are techniques and tools by which we can bring our heart into coherence, into the state of coherence, which is really the body's signature of love. And on Thursday, also in the water session that I'm doing, we'll do a coherence meditation in which we send that coherent heart energy into all of the water on the planet and all of the water within us and make the connection between the water within us and all of the water that exists on the planet and, and beyond, I like to say. Um, Thanks, Dan. You're welcome, thank you. And you're welcome to put your link if you want in the chat. And also to remind, let everybody know that the water and coherence and the new moon that Jane is doing is, is on the four elements room on Thursday. So you can mm -hmm. look at our Trello board to get the exact time. And Alian, you wanted to respond to that. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, just as Dana said that water has its own consciousness. Over here, and otherwise, I think in indigenous cultures all around the world, each water body has a spirit. And as we are desecrating it, and as we are disrespecting it, many like water bodies, like rivers, lakes, forest spirits, they're leaving because there is no home for them anymore. And I feel it is important, and I can speak of this in this way because I see them as beings. And uh, to be able to pray for them and to be able to send good energies uh, and healing energies to them because um, even the shamans um, back home here in Kalimpong have been saying that the, either they shift from that place or they leave. And there have been more and more visions and sightings of these spirits, of those water bodies leaving and of the forests leaving. And I feel it's important to address that also and to be able to put out prayers consciously uh, for them. Beautiful. Thank you. 
Thank you. You know, many years ago in 1987, I had an experience that woke me up to the intelligence and the magic of water. And I believe it was like I saw these spirits in the water and they spoke to me through my heart. And so I, I hear you and I know I've been some places around the water where it just feels like it's dead now, you know, like the spirit has departed. So thank you for bringing that in to, that we can offer prayers for them as well as all of our all of our attempts to help clean up the watersheds in our communities and and i was thinking what what fumi was saying about how we just people just waste water and you know flush it down and it's like if we saw water as god you know i to me it is so sa sacred precious being that has its own consciousness we we would never be doing that we would be we would be taking baths with the same bath water <laughs> we would be being very very careful with the water so I, I just go, okay, and you know, Dana, I know you're doing this work and I am as what I can and Jim and, and Sue so to educate people to, to whatever we can do to bring them to an experience of a really felt sense in their heart that yes, water is, is this being that is here for us and to begin to open our hearts to communicate with it. So I read a piece earlier, Dana, that was from the voice of water and asking for dialogue, asking to be heard and listened to and respected and, and to have dialogue. So I invite people to go and sit by the water and open your hearts and listen and offer prayers for the spirit of the water. So thank you. And I wondered if Tomo or, or Linda wanted to share anything you were listening, something stirred up to you to share about your relationship with water. Or not, depending on. Or not, yeah. Yeah, so inclination. I wanted to make a space is that we, we might ask Alien to uh, share some of what she has brought part of her presentation with her. Yeah. And we have enough time left, we could do that, mm -hmm. but I wanted to make sure everybody got to speak who wanted to. I have something to add about um, also conserving water, because you know, in Europe, when you take a shower, it, the, the water is not flowing all the time. Like here, you know, you go into the shower, you turn it on, it's just continuously the water's on. And, but in Europe, you have to press this button and the water will only go for about, you know, a couple of minutes and you have to press it again because there's a lot of times when you don't need that water to be flowing. You know, like say you're washing, you're shampooing your hair, you don't need to have that water you constantly. So I just remembered that when you, you mentioned, I don't know what, what um, inspired me to share that, but it's another thought that came to me. Thank you. You know, I've spent a lot of time in my youth on, on sailboats, you know, big ocean going sailboats. And, you know, we always did that. We would just turn the water on to get our hair wet and then we would soap up and, you know, and you had to really be conservative because you were carrying only the tanks of fresh water. Um, but you know at least so many i know of public places in their bathrooms now they have the the taps that you just hit and it only a, a little water comes out but mm -hmm. that would be wonderful if we would could promote that in this country and everybody's shower could be like that and um in our meeting before we came here grandmother silver star was there and she was talking about i i believe she was talking about the sun dance where you we where you um, don't have water and food for four days. I believe that's a sun dance. She didn't specifically say it was a sun dance, but she said when you experience not having food or water for four days, your whole relationship to water changes and forever your whole life, you are so grateful for the water. You know, you never forget that experience of not being without water. So, um, you know, it changes life forever towards you know, your respect, respect, honor, and gratitude toward water. So I thought that was really beautiful. And yes, that was a Sundance. Mm -hmm. I went three days without water or food in my first vision quest, and it totally changed. <laughs> I looked at bad water for sure. Yeah, I, I, I think sometimes uh, scarcity is important for us to realize the worth of those things. And I guess in current times, uh, 
since uh, like uh, Alien has spoken about how our you know elements uh, of water is disappearing, aquifer is drying up, so water being pumped up. I guess uh, this whole consciousness, the collective consciousness of honoring water and to respect water is a it's a very natural course of time because it's scarce and I like this conversation that we need to respect it because I come from a place like Darjeeling and Alien too. We both come from places where we have very scarce water and we have fought over water and yeah, so we understand. Yeah, thank you. I see that um, uh, Minkat Rumit has, wow. has joined us, Rumit Lepcha. And also Kat, I see, is here, but Rumit oh. from um, India or mm -hmm. uh, Nepal. That's beautiful. I'm so happy that she's joined. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome, everyone. Yeah. And welcome, Kat. You just jumped okay. into our Wisdom Council circle, sharing about our relationships with water. And mm. Thank you. It's good to join you. I can. <laughs> I can. Susan, Jim, <laughs> so good to see you all. Good to see you oh. too. <laughs> so, so uh, my relationship with water. I'm living in a high desert right now. Normally, I'm uh, on the coast of Alaska in Homer, where there's lots of water and receding glaciers that I see every day. What's going on in the high desert with water now? Uh, we just uh, opened up about a week ago from a fire that's called the Grizzly Creek Fire. And uh, I-70 was closed for two weeks. Hmm. And um, well, we all know how desperately dry the western part of America is right now. Yeah. So cats in the Colorado fires, why is in the California fires? You guys got the West covered for us. <laughs> <laughs> hold it, hold it, hold the energy. So well, do we want to give Alien a little time to yeah, share Yeah, that would be great. Some? Would you like to what? share some? What you brought for us? I'm just going to share uh, one today and the other one I, I hope I will be able to share uh, another day. And uh, this is basically about through my journey uh, the disconnection that I felt from the earth and from the elements in how we used to live in harmony with the elements and everything that we did was in harmony with the elements and um, through my journey I'd like to um, share that and I, I, I use textiles as my medium and uh, textile art so I'm going to share yeah um, as you see, uh, the first panel. Uh, Alia, the element. Yes. Yeah. Is there any way that you can talk, just give two line introduction about yourself? Because there are many new people who have come and oh, okay. they don't know okay. about you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hello, everyone who's joined in later. And uh, my name is Alien, and I come from the Lepcha tribe from the foothills of uh, the Himalayas. And um, Basically, I've been living in the city all my life because my father was always posted in the city and we moved cities all the time. Though we, every year we visited my hometown and that helped me connect to nature and that is like the deepest and the strongest memory I have uh, as a child. But being in the city, I realized that um, something was calling, home was calling and I was very sad and I was searching for home and uh, 
through my work, which I'm actually uh, trained to be a textile and uh, fashion designer. So through my work, somehow all my work was always inspired by nature. And uh, somehow it was always calling, but I never understood. And through various experiences in life, then I figured I have to go home. I have to go back home. And so this piece that I'm sharing is about the disconnection. And um, as you can see, Mayalyang in Lepcha means the land of hidden paradise. Uh, and that is the land of the Lepchas. And as you can see in the frames, it's, it, I'll just read out. And as you can see, uh, Mayalyang. Oops, I think I went back up. I'm really sorry. I'm 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 a little new to using. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Yeah. Just scroll up slowly. <clears throat> yeah. One second, I'm sorry. So when she talks about Himalaya, uh, we actually believe that we come from the Mount Konchenjunga, which is the third highest mountain in the world. Uh, so we we are believed that we come from the snow of this uh, zonga. So yeah, just to add on to our presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Missing and being in the city, in the elements, and in the work. We've forgotten its sound. We've forgotten to connect to the different elements and how we lived in harmony before. And then finally, through connecting to our ancestors and the old ways and trying to search for that and uh, coming back to Kalimpong, coming back to the land of my ancestors and things were not the same and the river was not the same. And it's just about having hope and being able to reconnect with it and give it a voice, especially water as we're talking about water. And for us to be here and the few of us that actually want to walk on this path uh, it's for us to stand up in our truth and to be able to reconnect and to share with other people our experiences and, and to help them remember. I think that is important for us to do. It's a short presentation, so I just end this. Yeah, I, but uh, I would just like to add on to her presentation. Alin, is that okay? Yeah, yeah, okay, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, the, the cloth that uh, she has worn, the pink one is our traditional dress. And uh, uh, this is what uh, we actually, we just wear it like one drape of uh, cloth draped in such a way that it becomes like a blanket for us when we were olden times when we used to travel. So they used to be like, um, like a, you know, warm cloth for us. And um, I think also right now, as we talk about it, and the reason why we are here is because uh, the river Tista is being dammed, uh, as you can see in the picture also. So there are almost like 36 dams which has been proposed in these river Tista. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, our rivers are suffering. And uh, that's one of the, you know, we are also calling for support to uh, be that voice for us. Uh, I think, Alin, if I uh, understand correctly, that's the damned river, right? That you have drawn? Yes, it is. It yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's what I wanted to share. And we will just share a Facebook page where we, our young guys like Rumit in Sikkim has been uh, lobbying and trying to talk about the Save River Tista campaign. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let's definitely get make sure we get that scheduled. I really want to hear the hear and see the whole program. That's, uh, that's what that's, beautiful artwork. What beautiful. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. so definitely. Amazing, amazing artwork. Thank you. It's beautiful. Incredible story just with the pictures. You know, I didn't, didn't need to hear anything else to know the story. It's right there. So, yep. so powerful. And so I understand that some you all thought that the 
that you had won and, and there were not going to be any dams, but the government changed or something? What, yes, so yes. So it's like a second fight for this? Uh, yeah, Maya, like what with, with us is like we have different clans, like Alien is like phoning, I am Namchu and Rumit has another clan. And our clans always have a mountain peak, a cave and a lake. And uh, these are three elements that we have and we, uh, whenever we die, our spirit goes through this river to the Mount Konchinzonga, which is our guardian deity. But because of these dams, what's happening is they are drilling the mountains. Which is, which is drying up the lake, which is also destroying our mountain peaks because there's so much of landslide that's happening. And uh, we have been voicing out for the past 15 years now. And uh, so this is uh, like, uh, this project that's going to come is right at the heart of that Kanchenzonga National Park, which is supposed to be one of the hotspots, you know, biodiversity hotspots. And because of this, uh, we, our, you know, even the shamans have been already had a prophecy about they're going to be a disaster if they, we do not listen to our ancestors. And uh, that's one of the main reason why uh, they are, you know, people back home, they are fighting. And uh, also like there are a lot of pharmaceutical companies, which has been uh, like there in the riverbank and a lot of this uh, like, you know, this contaminated water gets, uh, you know, disposed in the river and no one has spoken about it. And, uh, in, and it is almost like a conscious decision to divide us because somehow uh, this particular movement has become just an indigenous lecture issue. And then it just becomes, okay, their issue and not the river issue, you know? So that's, that's one of the reasons why we are also trying to make it uh, like everybody's issue that this, because the river we are in, dependent, all of us are dependent. And yeah, so it's been like a 15, day, 15 years of struggle and our elders are also almost tired and I think our youngsters need guidance and uh, that's, that's one of the reasons why I called them and I'm so happy that they are here listening as we speak. Me too, it's wonderful to have. And I hope they're here at, at the, the, the wisdom circles that follow up too. The next one, because we got a lot of new people. And let me just say this again. On Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, we're going to have the second Wisdom Circle. We're looking for ways forward. And that we're doing with Wise Humanity, which is a new partner out of Uruguay. And I'm bringing this up again, Minkit, because um, when I started connecting with them, what they have is a lot of young people down there, but they only, only have a few elders. So they're really looking for places where we can connect. And this has to go on globally now. We need to stand behind you just as if it was in our own backyard. Yes. Just like happened at Standing Rock. That's what needs to be global. Because it's your, your river. Okay. Go ahead. Well, just that our, on Friday, the 18th, our third wisdom circle, the theme is more a weaving of the relationship of the elements and the balance of elements mm -hmm. with social justice and peace. And I, I heard what you said that Sometimes it just seems that the indigenous peoples around the world who are the protectors of the earth and the environment are, are being targeted. It's, it's like, you know, like, like whoever, all these corporations and, and big operations, private operations like the dam, they, it's, like they, it's like they somehow, I don't know if it's conscious or unconscious, but it's just, yeah. And so there's that relationship with, you know, social justice, injustice mm -hmm. and, and the elements. And, yeah, it just it that breaks my heart, and uh, I just want to awaken so many people to come and be protectors of the indigenous people who are protecting the waters and the earth. And so uh, we yes, will talk. Uh, about the topic. Yeah, Maya, and uh, I don't know. I was supposed to be in this circle, but somehow I landed up uh, putting a card for the water activating wisdom, uh, and which is scheduled for seventeen. So. I think in that forum, uh, we are going to screen the film of River Tista, which I have made, as well as uh, the two activists, the water warriors from Sikkim, uh, Gatso Lepcha and Mayalmit Lepcha, who actually gave, almost gave up on their education to fight for this river. They're going to come and speak on uh, the River Tista. And also, I plan to tell a story, the folklore of River Tista on that day. 
yeah, so I, I'm pretty new with all this. So I, I thought I was coming in this and I landed up putting myself in water activating wisdom. But if you are free, please, uh, you all are welcome there. That's on Thursday, right? Is that on Thursday? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, that's uh, 17th, right? Seven, yeah, I, I think I saw yeah, it in the there, Yeah, yeah. And with these I will things, share the link. I will try to share yeah. the link here, I think. That's good. Because you can always, we had people today, you can change things too if you want. So if you're comfortable there, do it there. If you I, I, be, I mean, I, I would love to share it here. So I think, okay. Jim, I might seek your advice here like okay. when that. Yeah, we'll connect. All right. Because there was a couple of other people who are having similar issues. Um, and one on our, our board who didn't mean to be there. So I just said, well, then it shifted to where you need to be. And I hope yeah, you, I hope yeah and uh, I think Maya had mentioned about uh, in the on demand, uh, I have tried, I will be uploading yes. the film. So all of you can watch the film on River Tista so that you know more about the movement that's happening there. And though it was made in 2016, but I will put a page where all this fall off is happening. Okay. Um, I think, is that the Voices of Tista film? Yeah, Voices of Tista. Okay, that's up. I think the <clears throat> shorter version is up. I, I think I need to update the ah, longer okay. version. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we'll connect tomorrow and figure this all out. Yeah, I mean, this is yeah. a learning experience for everybody, obviously. Hmm. Who else? Anybody? I, can I ask a question? Sure. I'm just curious, uh, some of the, the Native American uh, elders here wanted to, I wanted to ask how, what are some ways that your cultures communicate with water? Well, uh, a lot of, uh, in, in some culture, we go to water as in a prayer or in, you know, as prayer also. So uh, like uh, morning time, like in the morning, right? We'll go to water. A lot of times, uh, it's like, uh, you know, you like, you have the sweat lodges of other nations or something like this. Uh, they go to water. So water is an essential in all, in all things. So some of us do go to water. I That's a good I point. A little bit. Yeah. You know, you said sweat lodge, and you're right, Charles. Whenever um, I build a lodge, or was part of a lodge, we were always on the water. So we, we include the um, water in all the prayers of the lodge, even though the lodge is about fire. Once again, it's fire and water. Combined. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, you know, as we as we do these prayers in the in you had the hot rocks, right? You ha you add the rock. As you pour the water upon the rock, the steam rises. You see. Right. So basically, in a sweat lodge, you go into the sweat lodge, and you're like in the womb of the earth mother. Okay. And trust me, you will crawl out like a young child <laughs> when you come out. So, yeah, water, there's the water and the fire working together again, okay, in that aspect. Beautiful, yes. It's, a, it's like it's integral. It's just an integral part of mm -hmm. your ceremony. I think it was, Sue, you still there? I think it was Bear Cloud. Wasn't he the one who talked about the four elements in the lodge, just like Charles is? Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. He did quite often. Uh -huh. Yeah, many of his lodges. When we were in, living in Sedona, we were, we were part of his lodge. And that's what I thought it was him. He always talked about the elements. He would bring the worms, the earthworms, and the heart, hearts they would leave in the earth. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then the ectomy, the spiders, <laughs> mm -hmm. talked to. 
I, um, I've been uh, recently working with a, a shaman from the Kogi people in Colombia, and they, they are the indigenous people who, they managed to escape when the conquistadors came and from their coastal uh, lands, and they went up into 15,000 feet and hid away. So they were there until, I think, this 35, 40 years ago. They were so in tune with the waters and the winds and the spirits of nature that they could tell that the ecosystem was, was unraveling, even though they had no contact whatsoever with any kind of media or, you know, anything. Mm -hmm. And they came down to give a warning and they actually sent their warning to the UN and to say, hey, you know, little brother, they call the rest of us, <laughs> you are not, you're not living in harmony in alignment and the most important thing for them is that that the water needs us that nature needs us to give back you know our prayers are one way uh, they also are very big on making offerings of listening to what the water needs and making offerings like sage or lavender or crystals or whatever in your particular area and um so anyhow, they, they went back up on their mountain and then they came back down again about 10 years ago and said, you, you did not listen, you know, it's, it's getting worse. So their whole thing, and we we're talking about all how so many people are so disconnected that they're saying we have to get a certain number of people reconnected to nature and back into this attitude of reciprocity, this, this respect and sacredness of giving back and there are many ways to give back and he, you know they're even suggesting that we know people who made a lot of money through businesses that hurt the earth then now it's up to them you know to recycle to give back their money to help with cleaning up the earth or uh, new technologies that are you know saving energy or cleaning up the waters or something so this idea of reciprocity, I just want to name, and in, in the smallest way of just recognizing the precious in the water and saying thank you. I, I sing thank you to the water in the shower every morning. I sing, I sing my prayers, and I'm not really a singer, but it doesn't matter. It's my <laughs> vibration that I'm offering to the water. And, you know, so just the smallest things that we can begin to help people to become aware of and to build that that way of giving back just our awareness first, our heartfelt feelings, gratitude, and then, you know, perhaps that exchange that you feel to <clears throat> give a substance that's, you know, obviously something very organic <laughs> back to the water. So, um, thanks. And you know, Maya, compared to me, you're probably an opera singer, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> we're getting a lot of people actually yeah. on on the uh, group here. So thank you to everybody who's listening. Yes, we did record it. So if you missed the beginning, you can catch it later. And uh, Minkat has asked if um, Ramek can share a few pictures on the river that she brought. So let's move it over to- Yeah, uh, before she, before she yeah. actually uh, shares the pictures, uh, Jim, I would just like to talk about what I have been doing uh, because it just comes from the water. <clears throat> So I think uh, while we kind of bring the consciousness on our on youth and people, but I think uh, my journey as a storyteller also came from the fact that uh, we have got detached from the river east or rivers, right, or for that matter, water elements. So I think to connect with the younger uh, children, very young children, at a very nascent stage, and uh, that is, I think, the need of the hour because they are the future. And I have used uh, the lecture folklore, the native native folklores, where they talk about nature because I think this folklore are the blueprint of what nature is about. They are already there. All that we need to do is disseminate this to the younger generation. And that is the some a very inner calling that I felt that I need to do this. So I connect with children to talk about the folklore, but of course, keeping the scientific aspect in mind. And uh, this is something which I feel uh, is very powerful, like seeding this uh, thought process in their mind because our education system does not allow it. And uh, there is this, uh, this needs to be there. So that is, uh, I think also, I feel like the need of the hour uh, 
for us also, not just as a storyteller, but just doing it in different ways to connect with children. And uh, yeah, so that, that's what I wanted to share. And uh, so Jim, can I ask Rumit to share a few pictures? Yes, please. Yes. Yeah, great. Uh, and Rumit, it would be really nice if you talk about it also. Don't feel shy. She's a very young girl. She just got out of her school, you know, and I'm trying my best to encourage her and uh, also hopefully age, like she age also does can not talk. Matter. Age does not yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, Rumit, can you share the screen, please? So they are at the forefront right now and uh, they are the ones who uh, was just doing a lot of things regarding the river. So this is Mountain Konchenzonga, which you see from North Sikkim. Uh, this is the holy land for the Lepchas. Uh, a lot of our folklore, a lot of our identity come from here. And uh, there is a mountain just below this white mountain. Okay, this is called like the guardian for the mountain. So this particular... Uh, Mountain Peak is also um, prayed. Uh, Rumit, could you please talk about it? Uh, sure. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Uh, so yes. this uh, mountain, Mount Kanchanzanga, is what we worship as our guardian deity. As nature is, like, as in whole, we worship as our god. As in, like, our guardian deity. Yeah, so... Uh, Anam, I think yeah. you can continue. Quite. And what about the Lingichu? No, you're the Lingichu uh, also. Could you just scroll and show that Lingichu? That mountain peak. So that is basically the bodyguard of Konchenzonga. That's how we pray. And uh, this is the area where this, um, uh, this uh, you know, the dams are going to come. And this is where the scary part is all our stories, our folklore are going to die with this, with this inspiration with this massive, uh, you know, development that's going to come. And I think there are some pictures about uh, the dams also, uh, or uh, the movement that's going on. Could you just share that, please? Yeah, so this is the River Tista, which comes from the Mount Konchenzonga. And this is where the dam is proposed. And this is like the last stretch that is flowing, like, of River Tista. Yeah, this is the last stretch of free-flowing river because below that there are around about four or five dams uh, in this area. But the government has proposed around or proposed 37 dams in that 140 kilometer of River Tista. So uh, this is something which is crazy and, you know, people need to talk about it. Yeah. So next, next, you have next picture also, right? Uh, especially with the current safety star movement, if you could just show. Yeah, so he's the one who's going to come uh, and going to talk about what's happening with the rivers. And uh, so he, he also went to a jail uh, when he was in college. Uh, because they they told that we were anti-government and we were actually uh, not uh, for the government. So they have been voicing out for a very long time. Uh, he's a, he's a uh, general secretary of affected citizens of Tista. And the Facebook page that I've shared, yesterday there was a meeting that happened uh, because this is going on as I speak right now. So they are they also try to talk about the ill effects of dam. So you can have a look at the Facebook page if anybody is interested. Yeah, thank you, Rumit. Thank you, Jim. You bet. Thank you, Rumit. How how can we help Minkat and, and Rumit? Uh, how can we help? I, I'm on the board of directors of an organization called Tribal Trust Foundation, and we do take on projects in certain places in the world to help the indigenous people. And I, I just, yeah, and, and so I, I, I'm asking for that, but also for all of us, what ways can we support this? Because I've known for a long time, dams are really a, not a good thing. And um, I would love to hear how we could support you. Yeah, I, I think um, like right now they are doing a photo campaign where they write safe Tista and then just put it up on the photo. But that's uh, one way of doing it, uh, the fast way of doing it. But the second part of it is actually um, we want 
people to share uh, this Facebook page and people know about the Rivertista and the movement that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, while we will be writing articles and we will be showing videos, uh, it's just that I think uh, right now we are struggling to locally mobilize it, but we just want the international friend of ours to be aware of it. And when the time comes right, when the time is right, maybe we can seek help. But right now we just want you to want to be want to inform you and also just be there with us in spirit. Beautiful. I'm there with you in spirit. Absolutely. What beautiful lands and to protect that sacred place and the place where your ancestors spirits dwell. And yeah. Yeah. And um, this is what uh, he uh, she has uh, sh shared where people are actually sharing and drawing and even writing poems for that uh, particular river tista. Uh, so I think at this moment, we are just trying to create the energy of for the river because we have been divided as people also for this cause where only lectures have been speaking, but the non lectures feel like, oh, it is not our issue. So it is just trying to create this uh, global uh, solidarity to talk for the river tista together. So yeah, I mean, for now, we, we would, if we are really asking just one picture of you with the, you know, safety stuff, you can send it to safety stuff Facebook page. I think it would mean a lot uh, because these young kids are doing a lot and that also would mean a lot for them. Yeah, I guess the, this is the last one you can share. Yeah. So she's wearing her traditional dress. She's a lecture baby. And yeah, this is what hashtag say no to NHPC or hashtag safety star is what you can follow. Yeah, thank you, Romain. Yeah, R Rumit, uh, I'm going to share the hashtag as I speak with all of you so that you can follow what's happening. Yes, and, um, I mistakenly like send it to you only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sorry. No, no, it's perfectly fine. Uh, and Rumit, do you want to share something to all our elders and our friends here? Because I think this is a great opportunity because you are there at the forefront and doing what you are doing. It would be great to share it. Don't feel shy. Sorry, we didn't hear you. Um, I don't know like what exactly I should talk about. Just speak your mind. Yeah, yeah just uh, stop sharing. Yeah. I think our connection is very bad because she is. In yeah, her, it sounds yeah. like the connection is bad. right. I think we lost. Yeah, her. okay. Because she'll be there in the next session too, so. Good. Yeah. Good. Like <clears throat> so sorry. Yeah. yeah. Connection's not good. Yeah, thank you so much. I thought like I was talking but then it suddenly went on mute. Ah. Yeah. You're back. Good. Yeah, so like I was talking about this campaign that like we are holding up, and this like campaign is like to protect our rivers, the last stretch that is flowing in Zongu, to protect that river from like the more damage that is about to come when these dams like they'll be built, because as we know the dam is like it is like a package of destruction that is like we are bringing here. And Zongo is like very fragile. Like this monsoon season, only the year has been like many landslides, there was like outbursts and all. And like many people were displaced from their villages. And like the root cause of all those like landslides are the dam itself. Even like the place I'm from, the, the village I'm from, passing down, there was this like massive landslide this last 
it was from June 27th. It was just like this massive landslide. And the root cause of that landslide as well was like, there's the Adit one, like tunneling there. Like, they are about to do that. But then it's not even done. And the landslide, like, it is affecting the landscape. Now only they are doing that. So to prevent all that, to prevent the and all, to prevent those, those dams in Gongu during this campaign, to protect our rivers, to protect the river, the last stretch that is going to protect the home of many species, not only us, like not, they cannot only give us, but then there are other species in that ecosystem. So yeah, I'm like so sorry, I'm quite nervous. <laughs> No, no, it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? <clears throat> Can I ask you a question? Very yeah, short. Sure. I'm just curious. Do you know Greta Thunberg? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So she stood up all by herself. What What made you, as, as a young person, uh -huh. stand up and decide to do this? Uh, me. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much for what you're doing. And, and we elders are so grateful for you young ones that still have the energy uh, to, to get out there and do the activism and the artivism. And we're so grateful. Yes, thank you so much. And I know, you know, not only are you defending your lands, your people and the ecosystem there, but I've learned about too many dams on the earth, stopping the flow of water actually can change the way our, the tilt of our axis and the way the earth rotates, it throws the whole earth off if too many rivers are stopped in their movement. And mm -hmm. so many people don't understand this. So you, you are protecting the whole earth by standing for this river uh, to be free and wild and thank you thank you so much thank you yes, so much. thank you very much thank you thank you very much and i did uh tell me cat and i tell you uh there is a movie a documentary called damn nation yes ma'am i'm like I, I have like i've checked that movie i like i watch i'm like watching it oh beautiful I'm beautiful yes, that explains a lot about dams <laughs> So, that was like good. <clears throat> so Jim, we're we're kind of coming to our ending here with five Soon. minutes. Yeah. It's been so rich. <laughs> wow. It certainly has been rich. Um I, I know I didn't get all the questions that got put forth, and I apologize to everybody. Um, we'll be here again. Join us in the next one and put the questions up again. We got to a lot of them, but this was such a meaty um, conversation that I just couldn't even follow up on the question, so I apologize. Um, what else? Uh, I just actually want to let people know also that on Monday at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, 5 o'clock Pacific Time, I am also doing a fire and water storytelling circle. And that is going to be people sharing, welcoming people to share their very personal stories of magical or transformational experiences with water or fire or <clears throat> really, I will open it up to any aspect of nature. When something special happened for you, I, you had a synchronous experience or a lesson or a teaching. And, and so it will be, you know, so I, I, I share with Minkat that love for storytelling and how important it is and that we hear each other's stories. So that will be, um, at that time, we'll, we'll, we'll do some sharing of our stories. That That's uh, the date uh, is 15, right? The 14th, I believe, the 14th, Monday okay. the 14th at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Yeah, 14th. Which is 5 o'clock right. time in California. So, um, and then, you know, a reminder of Dana's thing and 
and uh, just go look at the board for <laughs> the uh, the four elements and certainly look around at all the other wonderful rooms that are presenting uh, having amazing presentations and the good news is most of it will be recorded so you know we're going to be on the facebook page eventually we'll be able to catch up like you know on the ones that we've missed so um so so grateful for all of you showing up and um, just see if there's any last sharings and I would like to end with a, a poem that is a water blessing. That would be a blessing for all of you and for the water. <laughs> but I'd like to hear if anybody has any last, last shares. Uh, Maya, I just wanted to request uh, whatever you shared in the beginning. Uh, would love to know like where is it from so that I can read it again. I can send it to you. Yeah, please it do. Yeah. From the water, but through me. <laughs> oh, yeah. beautiful lines. Yeah, please do share. Thanks. Yeah. I will share that. And I, yeah, I can share this afterward too. Uh, let's see. I know, I know your email. I don't know if anyone else wants it. They'll have to email me and uh, maybe I put my email up in the really quickly up here so that you can email me and I will give you a copy. Uh, MayaShawGale at gmail.com. <clears throat> oh. There's a short song that I'd love to share that I wrote. Sing the song? I invite Before you do the yeah. song. Beautiful. So someone in your house can sing, Jim. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, we both know our gifts and our lack of gifts. That's a good way. Okay. It's called Be at One. Um, be at one with your spirit as you walk here on this earth. Know that love that surrounds you was there for you at your birth. Every day is a blessing, sacred journey as you walk. Take the time that is needed to be one with who you are. Mother Earth really needs us to be whole and honor her. For she needs that love around her to be fruitful and give birth. So be loving to yourself so your love can shine throughout. Being all that you can be will bring that love to all around. Be at one with your spirit. Oh. Thank you. Perfect. So beautiful. I can feel the waters in my body dancing to that one. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, but it's because I thought I drank too much water. Oh well. <laughs> Anyone yep. else? Anyone don't, else? Don't forget yeah. to bless the water in your body every That's right. day. Absolutely. Bless the water you drink. And the whole, I was taught to hold it to my heart first and then drink it and bless it so that the water receives that wonderful vibrations. Great Wolf, do I just stay right here when I talk with the other lady about the flags or do I just go somewhere first? Oh, sure. Well, that'll be after we get done the, uh, this week of, of programs. Oh, okay. I thought it was like later. No, no, no. She, she had to head off to something else anyway. So oh, I will make, okay. I will make sure okay. that I, I, connect, I will connect the two of you. Okay. All right. Sorry, that wasn't clear. <clears throat> Anyone else before we turn it over to Maya? Yeah, I think Rumit wants to read out what she has written. Good. Beautiful. Yes. Rumit, don't be shy. You can just speak out loud. Yeah? Go ahead. Yeah, so... Like this, like this is, I don't know, it's like, I don't know what this is actually, but then I wrote this when I was near the river, when I was actually 
witnessing the beauty of liberty star so like i'll just read out what i wrote i think it's like quite long. so yeah liberty star springs in joy as it flows no barrier no nothing on its free flow um, can you walk uh, can you just move from your place because we can't hear you can you just move so, about <laughs> yeah because uh, i think the connection is bad yeah like is it good now a little better hello yeah yeah a little better from the beginning yeah yeah so yeah i'll just go, go with what i wrote uh river tista springs in joy as it flows no barrier no nothing on its free flowing course she flows bravely tackling all the stops she meets on her way down to her destination her beauty so dazzling that all the species animate or inanimate witness are so awed by it she is the mother river where every stream flowing by our houses every waterfall in our photo gallery every water flowing within rocks meets her and all together they march on their journey ahead and to be where they want to be i can feel her breeze flowing by me whispering and as well roaring in laughter as she shares as sorry as she shares the happiness of her freedom with everyone she meets the last stretch of river to star freely flowing in happiness let it be as it is thank you beautiful beautiful you spoke the voice of the river oh oh that's beautiful may she remain free and wild yes no barriers mm -hmm. thank you rumet and yeah it'll, it'll be up to you all to make sure that continues to happen <laughs> we'll yes, sir. We'll support. yes sir we will we will put it on our facebooks and i will offer my prayers when i do my water ceremonies i will offer my mm -hmm. prayers for the river tista and all of you protectors thank you so much ma'am okay so if no one else has something i will read my blessing to you all into the water <laughs> May you open your eyes to water, then your heart. Seeing, feeling her as love, mother of all life, a vast intelligence informing the shape of things, carrier of memory, teacher of force and flow, and surrender to the formless when the time has come. May you recognize your own nature in her shimmering mirror, the nature of the universe in her spiral dance. May you find the path of least resistance as she eases around stones, kissing them as she passes, as if they were not obstacles, but friends. May you always honor the ebb and swell of your own unique tides and still seek to embrace with compassion all that is different from your own dream. May you drink and have the thirst you came into this life with quenched before you leave. May you have the thirst you came into this life with quenched before you leave. Yeah. 
Wow, beautiful. This was an awesome circle. Thank you all so much. Let's uh, continue to connect our prayers and our uh, just everything. Mm. Oh, I see Darwin just made it in. Darwin, I'm sorry you were late. Um, we have more coming later in the week, so just check out our page, our Trello page, and you'll see them. Ooh, yeah, this one really sets up the rest of the week for us, I think, spiritually. I think we set it up um, emotionally this morning, and now we've, we've done it here spiritually. So, yeah, great thanks to all of you, because everybody here was an important piece of this, no matter how much or how little you said. It's been wonderful. Blessings to yes. all of you. Thank you. Blessings to all. And then, Jim, you have to make me the host so I oh, can. Oh, yeah. We're, we're, still having, yeah we're still having issues here. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Okay. You got it. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good night or middle of the night to all of you. <laughs> we're, we're, we're off the live stream now. We're just okay. here live Good. with yeah. each other. Blessings. Still recording. Yeah. Thank That's you, true. everyone. Thank it's you, past everyone. my bedtime. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's true. Thank you so much. Nice you. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Hard yeah. Good night. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.